This video explains how to um, do act student activity number one. So to do that, I'm going to use an example. I will do row number one using Mike G's constraining sentences from the text. If you remember, uh, he constrained the world of Abby Bascody and Dana with seven sentences, which I have entered here in the first row. So to update the grid, we say that Dana likes Cody, so I'm going to place a 1 in that grid spot right there. And the reason a 1 goes there is because this says Dana likes Cody. But Abby does not like Dana, so I will put a 0 in that grid spot right there. And we also know that Dana does not like Abby, so a 0 goes in that grid spot right there. And let's see, best likes Cody or Dana. So I'm going to put a one here and a one here uh, just to say, okay, Dana, uh, Cody, best likes Cody or Dana. But then the next one is Abby likes everyone that best likes. So Abby does not like Dana, so that means best cannot like Dana. But Bess has to like either Cody or Dana, so it's going to be Cody. All right. Um, since Abby likes everybody that Bess likes, then she likes Cody because Bess likes Cody. Um, Cody likes everybody that likes her. So let's see. Cody, let's see. Abby likes Cody. So Cody has to like Abby. Um, Bess likes Cody, so Cody has to like Bess. And Dana likes Cody, so Cody has to like Dana. All right, so we've got all of those. And then we have nobody likes herself. So that means I have to put a zero along the diagonal here because nobody likes herself or nobody likes themselves. And let's see. We know also that Abby likes everybody that Bess likes, but Abby doesn't like herself, so that means Bess can't like Abby either. All right, so I think I've entered all the constraints that these constraining sentences place on my world, which means that I'm left with two unconstrained boxes, and I think it's this box here and this box here. Whoops, I made a mistake there. That's actually a one. And so there's this box and this box. Just to make it clearer, I'm going to... Uh, Let's see. Put all of those in. Okay. So now we have a world that is not completely constrained. There are actually two boxes that are unconstrained. Okay. So the purpose of this is now that I've shown you an example of how to do it, you're going to write your own sentences. Your sentences will constrain the world in some way. And the object of your activity is to constrain it some, but not completely. So I challenge you to end up with two or three unconstrained boxes while trying to write seven or fewer sentences that constrain. Okay, so for teachers, um, the purpose here is to engage students in doing what at first might seem like a simple activity, but actually there's more to it than meets the eye. And so a student who can do this effectively is probably understanding what you've taught so far. Okay.